My name is Danette Lambert. I'm with Get Free TV, and we're talking with Freeman Sullivan today. Uh, we're going to learn how to live stream. So, hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Good to be here. Uh, let's just dive right into it, and uh, let's talk about how did you get involved in live streaming? Well, I've started, um, I've always been a, a geek, and I've been in the communications since I was a wee lad. Um, I was on the AB team in school, I guess. That's how I got started way back in the 60s and uh, 70s. And I did my first act of civil disobedience at 10 years old right after Kent State. Awesome. Anybody remembers that? And I was the, uh, used to do the morning announcements. And I shut off the uh, intercom system for the school during the morning announcement during the Pledge of Allegiance because I was active. Uh, I didn't think that we should pledge allegiance to a country that was killing their own people. At the age of 10, you made that decision. So, uh, I was a marked man after that, but I did continue with communications. I worked for like the school paper and uh, so on. I did a lot of writing and I got into uh, DJ, uh, uh, both broadcast DJ and uh, dance DJ. And uh, I worked for a newspaper uh, as a pressman. Uh, learned I know all the nuts and bolts about all kinds of different media, but I got into live streaming in uh, 2011, right at the beginning of Occupy, and my lawyer bought me a smartphone, and I wanted to go out and start live streaming Occupy people and what was going on with them because it was a movement that I really believed in. And I basically started live streaming because I was trying to protect people from getting beaten up by the police. And uh, because of demonstrations, there's often, uh, when the police see that there's people that are videotaping them and when they know that they're on live stream, uh, their behavior tends to be a little bit better than not. That doesn't always work, but uh, that's why I started and I was able to save people from getting beaten up by the police, uh, both in Oakland and in San Francisco. And uh, just, uh, I got into it as a medium um, and been doing it ever since. I'm going to be going out on uh, Monday. I'll be out on Wednesday over in San Francisco at the Super Bowl City Homelessness Demonstration. And then I'll also, uh, and then on uh, Thursday, I'll be uh, live streaming from San Francisco again at Diane Feinstein's offices um, for Stop the Trans Pacific Partnership Demonstration. That'll be on Thursday at 12 noon. So, uh, I try to, I've been uh, live streaming in 18 different cities here in the United States, uh, mostly in DC and New York, and uh, here in the Bay Area. And uh, I'm really excited by its potential as a medium. And I'm actually a little bit excited that Ustream was sold to IBM. Um, I think that uh, it'll provide more uh, capital for uh, Ustream to expand and grow uh, because we prefer. Um, I'm basically, there's a lot of different live streamers that, you know, the word gets tossed out there pretty, it's getting pretty tossed out there pretty randomly now. Like, uh, uh, what differentiate, differentiates what we do here as live streamers as opposed to somebody like KTVU or some news organization that just has a live feed. So it's not really a live stream, it's a live feed of their news is that uh, we have the two-way communication uh, going on with the people on the other side of the line. So, you should, like, I don't know how many people get onto your chat, but if you go over and check your chat every once in a while, then we'll be taking uh, questions from people that are out there watching um, that want to know more about live streaming and about some other information that we'll be able to provide to you about obtaining possibly some some equipment of your own if you want to do some live streaming. Mm. And also let us know how the uh, audio visual is coming out there. So uh, make sure that you uh, tweet out there because a lot of Live streamers, they forget to tweet while they're while they're live streaming to let people know that they're out there. So perhaps you should probably tweet that now. <laughs> right, she's not behind the camera, folks. So, so. Uh, so how do we do that? What do I want to uh, do? There's a little button on the lower right hand side. Uh huh. And it'll uh, you should be able to hit that and we'll come up with a little the menu. The chat. That's the chat. There's another little button. There. Share. Yeah. There you okay. Go. And just hit share on the bottom. Hitting that. I'm broadcasting Get Free Learn live stream live on Ustream Watch and Chat, and I can send to Twitter. Yep. Right. Tweet out there. And if you're, uh, you want to know more, first of all, uh, follow me on Twitter at Freeman, 
F-R-E-E-M-A-N-S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N, Freeman Sullivan, or Get Free o at Get Free Oakland. Is your tag, is your uh, handle there? Get Free Oakland. Get Free yes. Oakland, there you go. And uh, if you want to find out more about, about what's going on with the Nets, the Nets world. The project, yes. Okay, all right. Um, so uh, we found this to be an effective tool. And uh, another word that gets bandied about too is um, citizen journalism, which is kind of like, uh, this is like the latest evolution of what's going on because now we have all these great handheld devices that allow us to broadcast from practically anywhere where there's a, a 4G signal, you know, most places here in the United States. Um, so live streaming is easier than it ever was. And uh, so this is changing the dynamic of our society. Uh, for instance, the, we were talking a little earlier, the Black Lives Movement wouldn't, basically wouldn't be here um, unless we were able to get video of police misconduct. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's, that's what drew me into it because I have been a, a very much a vocal critic of the police department, uh, both here in the Bay Area and around the country. And, uh, and this is one way that, uh, that we can control the narrative because whenever you see an incident in the news media uh, about for instance, some young black man being killed. Um, it's always that he was a criminal or blah, blah, blah. He had a rap sheet. Uh, you know, he wasn't a good person. You know, and then we know, for, you know, and then, and then the friends and the family would come up and say, well, we knew him all his life, and he wasn't that kind of a person. So um, so now we have this this thing, whereas traditional media had always tried to uh, promote the fallacy of objectivism in their reporting, like they never wanted to get all the side, different sides of the story when in reality they were just promoting their own agenda mm -hmm. uh, through editorial uh, staffing and things like that. Like, uh, you know, a lot of reporters I would meet, and I've done reporting myself, uh, what you write on the scene and what you report on and what actually makes it into print or on uh, broadcast is, are two different things. Mm -hmm. And uh, so with live streaming, uh, we have lost the need for that journalist, journalistic objectivity because now the lens is the arbiter of what the truth is now, and it's undeniable with live stream because there's only a six second time delay between when the viewers, when the, the action is happening or the news event is happening and when it is broadcast out to people so people get to see it right away and you know, form their own opinions. And what live stream allows people to do is to actually watch the video or watch the, uh, I guess video, uh, the, the stream, and then formulate their own opinions about what's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, for people that are trying to promote uh, leftist politics and trying to get people, especially in the anti-authoritarian community, where we're trying to get people to think for themselves and not accept the narratives that go out there with mainstream media, um, this was a big important step in, in, uh, in journalism, and which is why I'm such a big proponent of it, which is a revolutionary thing. Mm -hmm. So you have that. And um, where the lenses are the arbiter of opinion now, because uh, uh, so the only the only subjective element that could be added into this um, equation would be the, where the camera gets pointed, mm -hmm. and and that's where um, the citizen journalist comes in because it's, because this can be done anywhere, at any time. Um, and I've gotten up out of bed in the middle of the night and live stream uh, when somebody was shot in my alley when I was living on in the tunnel or uh, living on 6th Street mm -hmm. and there was people getting shot and I was out there like a nut. <laughs> I don't know why I was doing that. <laughs> right, I'm crazy. Right, right on the story, so, fresh on the story. Yeah, right, yeah I used to do that. You know, and uh, um, so this takes a, you know, this is this is like a media and, and uh, um, this actually modifies people people's behavior. And not just from people that are that are uh, doing the live stream, also the people that are watching the live stream. And uh, it's effective as, as a political tool. And we barely scratch the surface with it right now. Uh, because there's so many people out there watching. I've had as many as, as 40,000 people watching. And you can imagine how many phone calls that would translate into. For instance, like on... Uh, for instance, on this Thursday when we're at Diane Feinstein's office, mm -hmm. like I'm going to be pushing that Diane Feinstein number. Call Diane Feinstein number. Let her know. Doesn't matter if you're even one of her constituents. Keep calling her office because she's a big proponent of this trade deal, and we don't want it. It's bad for the economy. Mm -hmm. So this is one way that you can translate um, your activism from the live stream to people out there in the world 
in a more direct fashion. So that, that's exactly what we want to do here with the Get Free Project. You know, we, we have an eye towards running people for office, but really what we want is to democratize our government, sadly enough, because it's not quite there yet. But you know, what keeps people from inter interacting and engaging with the political system is their lack of understanding or the lack of accountability. So we're looking at this to kind of create an accountability structure outside of government where we can actually talk about what people are doing, talk about the policies as they're going forward, and give people real action items that they can do to address uh, you know, getting their issues uh, met. I mean, so you talked about uh, being out at protest. We're doing it right now as sort of a live tutorial. Um, you mentioned Black Lives Matter movement. What are some other ways in which you've seen people use live streaming as a tool? Um, it's a great tool for um, having meetings, mm -hmm. for instance, and you don't have to use Ustream for that. Uh, right down in Hangouts, uh, Google Hangouts was a very effective way for people to actually have, uh, you know, face-to-face -face meetings online. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a, that's a really good way of doing it. Can you live? So you live stream a Google Hangout? Yeah, right. You know, people people can join it, and they um, communicate with each other, uh, right, with video mm -hmm. and text if they want to use text. If so. you're using Google Hangout, can you just live stream just directly from Google Hangout, or do you need to use another app? No, you can do it directly from Google Hangout. Google Hangout. Right, or you can do it with UStream, uh, with their chat feature. Mm -hmm. And you just have to check the chat every once in a while mm -hmm. and to make sure that people are in. And it's not quite as an effective way as the Google, because Google, you know, that lets everybody have their own camera and their own device. And so that way they're more, they're in control. We have each individual that's more in control. And you can have up to 32 people on one of those. Lines. On Google Hangouts. Yeah, it's like a conference call when mm -hmm. you're using video. I've used it. I've never thought of it as like projecting out into, like doing a live stream of it. I've yeah. used it for closed meetings. That's, yeah, well, in my humble, Opinion Google Hangouts is one of the best products that unfortunately it's the best products that Google makes, but um, they, they don't really support it a lot, mm -hmm. and I don't really think the, you know the company you know I don't think they realize it because there's just so many different things that you can do with it, and um, for all the other services that they offer, um, you know it kind of fits in with everything else. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the most useful things. Um, one of the few things that I use from Google that might be used more than a search engine. So. Um, so uh, meetings is really good, uh, you know, organizing meetings and have, actually holding meetings. Uh, whereas um, I know San Francisco Board of Supervisors and all their other meetings they have at the City Hall in San Francisco, they live stream everything. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's not a traditional live stream, it's just a feed because yeah. there's no two-way communication. Oakland here, Oakland uh, they have a live stream up now. Well, they, they have, have a television. Yeah. But they don't have it online. Yeah. So they, I mean, it is live when you watch it. You can watch it live online, but you can't interact with it. Um. So, um, in my little world of, 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 like, I've been an organizer well, since I was 10, so that's 46 years now. Uh, in terms of creating change in society, personally, and my personal thing is I, I really am a big supporter of direct action. Mm -hmm. um, I think that protest is very important, and not so much as we want everybody out there protesting all the time, because sometimes it's not effective. But at the same time, that people need to know that people are out there and they are demonstrating about mm -hmm. things, and it's very important to control that message. And live stream is one of the best ways to control the message, because you're out there and it's immediate. And it's like people just need to know that there's somebody out there standing up to what's going on. Mm -hmm. I find that to be really important. And it's not just important to the people that are out in society, but it's also really important to the people that are actually there, mm -hmm. right? To know that their their message is getting out there, to know that they count. Um, I've seen people, like when I showed up to live stream, that, that put a lot of energy into the demonstration because people were real happy that they knew the message was getting out there. Mm -hmm. And that's important too. It's uh, you know building mor uh, morale for people, um, you know, because politics is a very grinding, uh, thankless kind of thing to be involved in. You know, I'm not recommending it to people. Uh, you know, as a way of life, right? The rewards are few. Right? Um, you know, it's a lot of sadness and heartache. Uh, yeah. No, just love the light side. But yeah, we're trying to get people involved. Uh, you know, we never have enough live streamers around in the country. Uh, we could always use more people out there. Uh, like the other day, there was a uh, demonstration in San Francisco, which I could have made. Um, that was a march for the Mario Woods. Mm -hmm. Coalition sponsored it and went to the Super Bowl city. 
and it got pretty hairy and there was a lot of police and you know whatever but it needed to be out there so people can see yes the not everybody's a Super Bowl clone and there are people out there that care more about what's going on besides football and uh, not to say that football is the worst thing in the world but um, there's certainly more important things in society I was out there, I was, it was really for me to show the values when, you know, they took, a, like I've seen them construct the Super Bowl city because I work near there. So in a week they constructed this entire city and yet we don't have a solution for homelessness right. in this community. Um, I think that was very telling about where our priorities are, yeah, so. Um, going back into live streaming, so, um, the nuts and bolts of it. So we had started out working with Periscope, but you have advised me not to use that. Oh, not at the time. Um, as they develop it more and more, I, it will become a, a really good platform. But um, right now, I, I tend to, again, tend to put you streamers. Also, BAM user, B-A-M-B-U-S-E-R, which is very popular. Uh, Livestream.com um, is also very popular. Uh, Ustream doesn't charge for their services, for their, you know, the novice is just getting into it. Um, it's a better choice economically. They do have commercials, um, but most people have ad blocking software, so that stops the commercials. Um, so Ustream will have to find another revenue stream. Yeah. It's not working out on that. Maybe that's why they sold them that. Too. But I recommend Ustream because it does a lot. Of, there's a lot of functions in the back end of the program, uh, the app that make it that kind of cool is uh, the fact that. Uh, and our, like, for instance, you're out in the field and you drop your camera or you lose your connection. Well, Ustream automatically saves that, right? Whereas the other, uh, I don't know if Livestream does, but I know BAM user does. not BAM user, you actually have to upload it from the phone. So, for instance, um, there could be a case where you're live streaming and the police take your phone, and uh, which happens all the time, actually. And the police, uh, if it's not automatically uploaded, then the police can just delete it off your phone and there's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. Whereas when it's live streamed up to a server, it's already out there into the uh, the internet and there's nothing that the, the legal authorities can do about it mm -hmm. at the time. You know, they can get a subpoena later on to enjoin you from stop uh, replaying that video, but they can't do anything in the immediate situation. So that's really important. So that for person, people that are doing cop watch and things like that, I would recommend you stream over all the other ones. Plus, uh, I don't know. I, I, I just noticed. I, you know, I follow this pretty closely with the with Periscope. Is still they're still using the the vertical camera angle, and it's like peeping through. It's like watching something through a people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you know, that's having a problem. Yeah. Yeah, and that's one other thing. And plus, they don't archive the videos, uh, which is something that Ustream does. Um, you're allowed a certain amount of space. And then the other thing, which is important, is uh, you're going to want to archive a lot of the live streams. And that's another feature that Ustream has is that they archive it to YouTube. Mm -hmm. So that way you can have a record of everything that you do as well. So there's always tiny little features that make it a better, better platform. In the long run, I, you know, Ustream just got bought up by IBM. I don't know what their viability is going to be in the marketplace. Um, and personally, you know, I've actually written a live stream app. And my basic thing uh, with that is, is that uh, we're trying to get it organized so we can have funding and we can fund it in the best possible way uh, because uh, of certain minor you know, economic circumstances. And so I have to keep all that stuff straight. But uh, so who knows what's going to happen with Ustream down the road, but I've used them for the last four years and I've always gotten fairly decent service from them. They've actually reached out to me in the past and wanted to know uh, how to make it better. So I, you know, I shot them some code, oh, this is how you can make it better. And um, um, so that's my for uh, North American live streamers, it seems to be pretty much the platform of choice mm -hmm. for people that are doing political stuff. So, okay. but there's all kinds of live streams. There's bird cam, you know. There's one on the Falcons. There's so you know we're we're just talking specifically about using live streams for political organizing. Yeah. Well, so that's so we're looking to live stream a political television show every week on different topics. Um, we've actually done it three times before, although we haven't really broadcasted it out because we're still testing it and we're still trying to figure out what it is exactly that we're doing. But um, now that we've started out, we've switched over to Ustream. Uh, we want to start getting a following. We want to start getting people paying attention. What is the best way to, to, to do that? The uh, best way is to build up your social media, uh, namely 
uh, you know, Facebook, but uh, even more so Twitter. Uh, because uh, people that want to find out about current events go to Twitter. Right? They follow hashtags. Um, and the best way to build up your Twitter account is to learn how to use the hashtags and use the proper hashtags. And you don't have to make your whole tweet. You know, it doesn't have to have a hashtag in front of everything. But uh, just try to keep it focused like anything else. Um, another good thing to do is find other people that are interested in whatever you're interested in and start networking with them. Um, that's real effective for live streamers because we have a we have a, a pretty close knit community, and we, you know since we lack you know the advertising budget of large corporations, we have to rely on each other to uh, get the word out. So when you network with other live streamers, then we tend to retweet, and mm -hmm. and so we have this close knit community, and that actually is just as a, as just as an effective as somebody that has a hundred thousand followers because we can reach that many we can reach millions of people just through a couple of degrees of Twitter. You know, so build up the Twitter account, follow Twitter, uh, learn how to use your hashtags properly, uh, tweet out regularly, uh, which is also important to keep at it. And um, also I noticed Facebook is opening, um, they're introducing a live stream feed as well. And I looked at it today and I wasn't too impressed by it uh, just yet. So, uh, you know, there's, I still believe that Ustream is the industry standard at this current time. Uh, but there's going to be lots of competition. Five years from now, the whole tech industry could be completely changed. You know, we could be live streaming in 3D. We don't know, you know, what's down the road here. Um, for anybody who's a serious live streamer, though, uh, uh, and you want to be out there, you, uh, remember, if you're going to do political stuff, you're going to have a lot of contact with uh, law enforcement and and other things. So you want to try to keep your what you're doing as simple as possible. I think is a great way to be uh, because. You know, you don't have to be trying to pay attention to too much stuff. So, you know, don't go out there thinking that you need to have a super expensive smartphone to be able to do this properly. Any phone, uh, uh, personally, I recommend Metro PCS mm -hmm. as a provider. Um, and they're pretty much available nationwide. And uh, uh, because they have a limited uh, bandwidth, which is real important because you can rack up real high cell phone bills. It's not, it's getting better, but it, that's, it's the most economical way to go. And you can usually get a phone from them for practically nothing, or you know they'll give you the phone as long as you sign up for, the, you know you sign up to join their service. Mm -hmm. I paid at the time I got paid forty dollars for my phone, mm -hmm. so and it works pretty well, folks, right? So forty dollar phone with uh, you know because it's more about uh, how much bandwidth you use than anything else. Every and right now the bottleneck in live stream communications is is the bandwidth, the four G bandwidth. And pretty soon they'll be offering 5G. I, I was reading about that today. They're testing it out. So it'll get even better. Yeah. I'm just trying to think, like, are there best practices for live streaming or, like, general, like, no no's that you should be thinking about? or? Uh, keep it simple, number one. And keep that, uh, when you go out there, try not to, like, if you're doing political stuff, don't be the story. Like, a lot of live streamers get out there and they want to make it all about them, mm -hmm. right? Well, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to provide a window for, you know, people to see. So, remember your subject. Mm -hmm. um, real important is try to keep the... We're doing a, we're doing a sit-down show here, so this is a little different. Mm -hmm. But when you're out in the streets trying to capture action, try to keep the lens between... Try to stay... But we'll keep the lens between you and the action in between, right? So that way, uh, you, know, you can keep focused on what you're doing and provide a better image. Mm -hmm. So that's important. Uh, try to engage people that are there. You know, always look to talk to people, try to get their opinions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and try to capture, you know, the closest actions. See, with most uh, cameras and most live stream things, we don't have focus. So another important thing is try to get as close to what's going on as possible mm -hmm. because uh, the resolution is not always that great. So the closer you are to something, the better picture you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a pretty simple thing. Do you find that there are some things that get more attention than others, or...? Uh, riot porn. Riot porn. Yeah, but anything involving the police beating people up, unfortunately, no, is... We love scandals and sens sensations, yeah. It usually gets the most people to watch. Uh, at this time, it usually gets the largest audiences than anybody. And there's big, huge demonstrations. 
I've seen as many as 100,000 people watching live streams down in Mexico. Mm -hmm. and, you know, because uh, live streaming is actually more popular in Mexico than it is here. Interesting. And uh, it's probably because they have better bandwidth. <laughs> but um, yeah, well, you know, Mexico is a little more politically, you know, it's a tumultuous country than the United States. And uh, but when uh, there was a bunch last year with the students mm -hmm. because of what was happening with uh, I had some. Uh, well, they murdered all the teachers. Mm -hmm. So there was big, huge demonstrations about that. There was thousands of people watching that. So, um, yeah, your numbers pretty much are dictated by whatever the action is going on. Mm -hmm. like if you have a regular weekly show, well, then you kind of cultivate an audience. You, you know, you build it up over time. Whereas with uh, live streaming, uh, like uh, political events, out, you know, demonstrations and such, um, uh, it happens all pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's another thing too when you're live streaming. Um, that's important to do. And those mm -hmm. I was mentioning that today about one is don't just sit up there and, and be on for half an hour and try to think you're going to have an audience after half an hour. It usually takes about 20 minutes for the first tweets to get out that people are seeing them that actually you start attracting an audience. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to live stream, you know at least try to do it for an hour. Mm -hmm. Right, it's a bare minimum. You know. So in order to prepare for this, we, we put together our Facebook event and invited folks out that way. I, I tried to post a schedule onto Ustream. I'm not sure if that worked. But like, what other ways do you think oh, yeah. there are to kind of get folks paying attention on a regular basis to a show like this? Uh, well, if you're, uh, like I said, using hashtags mm -hmm. is really good. Uh, networking with other people that are doing live streams, for instance. If you want to find out about live streams around the world, there's a website called freedomfighterstreams.com okay. and they have a little JavaScript in there to let you know when somebody goes up mm -hmm. that's doing a political live stream and, and when you start doing political stuff then you will be noticed by you know, people on the web. Okay. Um, and basically just stay regular. I mean that's really important, most important thing about anything on the internet if you want to get a lot of followers is you tweet regularly, post regularly, you know, uh, you know, kind of have conversations with people regularly online, mm -hmm. um, report regularly, do live regular live streams, um, and I found that the more, you know, the, the, because then people know where to find you and they become familiar with your work. Awesome. What you're doing. Awesome. Uh, yeah, is there anything else you want to talk to us about live streaming? Uh, or? I don't know. I think I'm about ten for. Okay, let's see. Let's do this quick little review. So, so we're using. Oh, we should check and uh, see who's watching. Well, we only have we one chatting. viewer so far. No, no, well, tweet us. You're not tweeting out enough. Hmm? So you're not tweeting out enough. You have to keep, you have to get pretty, you have to get hard on that tweeting if you want people to watch. Tweeting while you're doing yeah, it? Yeah, it's real important to keep so, at it. So. Right, because the more you tweet, it'll get out there more and more and more. Right? So, so after the fact, I think we'll tweet this out, uh, just showing it. We'll yeah. post it on Facebook, and then I guess. Post it on your Twitter or your post, YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. Did you look your accounts up yet? Yes. Well, okay. I'm not sure if I have all that. You're going to have yeah, to, well, you're well, gonna we, look over that all okay, with me. Uh, okay, this is a topic for a future live stream. Yes. We're going to do a demonstration. I'm going to show people, and we'll do it from the desktop. Uh, we'll show people how to run a program called XSplit, which is a uh, video uh, broadcasting software, and real simple to operate. And we'll also uh, show people how to run the Ustream app as well, because they have a really great back end. And which allows you to do a lot of different things that you probably didn't even know that you could do. Great. So, so can I continue the, we'll consider this part one right. with more of a hands-on tutorial coming up after uh, that may take a little bit less time, but I think that was a great background. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. No problem. Yeah, it should be. There we go. We wrap it up. Have a great evening. Build power, get free.